So this is the uh, 28th of October Interledger Community Call. Thanks for joining. On the agenda today is Sabina's presentation around ILP Torrent. Um, I'm going to have it hand over to her in a second. And if we have any time at the end, we'll pick up uh, any other topics folks are interested in discussing. Uh, so without wasting any more time, Sabina, over to you. Okay. Let's see how screen sharing works. What do you usually do? Desktop is probably the easiest. It all depends how much of your desktop you want to share with us, I think. Well, just have the, <laughs> just have the usual stuff, I guess. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, can everybody see that? Yep. Perfect. Cool. So yes, uh, ILP torrent. I uh, also called it web monetization torrent for creators uh, because it uses web monetization and is based on web torrent. Um, and I will dive right in. Um, I have a little like overview of how the BitTorrent protocol works, which was like the first um, protocol that introduced torrenting and. Uh, um, it wasn't the first file sharing protocol. There were others before, um, but was, what was so new about BitTorrent was that it actually split files into parts um, and didn't rely on like full files being shared. Um, so it works in a way that there is um, some web server out there. So I, I put uh, ubuntu.com because Ubuntu, you can actually download the um, very well, quite popular um, uh, operating system that I'm also using. Um, you can just like, just do a, a request to their server and get the ISO file, or you can uh, download the torrent file and then use the torrent protocol to download the ISO. So um, there's ubuntu.com and it has this uh, torrent file. And whenever I want to upgrade, then I go there and I download this torrent file with uh, and put that into my BitTorrent client. So that's down here. That's me. I want to have a new version of my operating system. And this torrent file, I have a slide later on that shows what it includes. But one information it includes is a, a URL of a tracker. And that's this one up here. And the tracker is basically another server in the system that keeps track of um, who has which part of the file currently downloaded. So there's like a bunch of people, uh, clients here in the swarm, and some have already 100% of all the file parts downloaded and some are just like in the middle of downloading. And then my client uh, receives this list of, of peers from the tracker and uh, basically figures out who to talk to to download which part. And there's like some some uh, game theory in there and uh, some, some very smart algorithm to figure out who to talk to to download the, the entire file as, as fast as possible. Um, so that is basically how I uh, upgrade my operating system every once in a while. Haven't done it lately though. Um, and uh, I wanted to add, uh, the aspect of monetization in here, basically, I mean, in the case of Ubuntu, they probably don't want to um, sell the operating system if it's open source, but um, you can think of like some indie movie provider that wants to um, sell um, like the right to watch the movie and like torrenting right now is just like very much um, associated with movie piracy. Um, but I guess one reason for that is that there isn't just like really a, a way to to monetize this movie, and that's what I wanted um, to try. And it's it's to totally not perfect yet, but hopefully a, a movement to the right direction. So there's like three ways where you can add monetization here. So first of all, um, the the web server could just be paywalled or um, have some some authorization that or some login that you need to to pay for the access for, but that doesn't really help much because um, 
uh, once I have the torrent file, I can just go and put it somewhere else and then people um, can still um, pirate the movie or whatever. Um, so like putting the, the payment part here doesn't really make sense. One person will pay, but then the rest can just get it for free. Um, the second option is putting it at the tracker. So before the tracker actually communicates this peer list to the client down here, it verifies that payments have, have been happening. And that's actually the, the, um, the solution I went for, even though there is a better solution. And that would be if the peers actually uh, verify payment to the creator um, before they allow the, the download of the file part. Um, the reason I didn't go for this one is because um, I'm using um, the stream receipt verifier that Brennan talked about two weeks ago. And right now um, you can really only have one proxy to like it, to the, uh, for the SPSP requests, there can't be many, but if, they, if all of these needed to, to verify, then they all would have to proxy the SPSP request to one payment pointer. And uh, well, as far as I know, that's not possible yet. So that's why I went for solution B, put the verifier with the tracker. Okay, and then, then this, there's the question of like, how do we do the monetization in, in our world? at least of two solutions. So there's open payments and the tracker could just issue an invoice or want the user to create a, like create a mandate on the user's wallet. Um, problem there is uh, wallets haven't implemented that yet. So I couldn't use that. And then we have web monetization. And what's actually nice about web monetization is that you can pay as you download. So, um, I'm streaming payments and especially like in the movie scenario, I'm probably not going to download the whole movie in, in one go. It will take me a, um, a few iterations where I talk to the tracker again and get an updated list of peers. And uh, then I download a little bit again and then 10 seconds later, I'll talk to the tracker again and, uh, and so on. And like I could pay for each of these um, communication parts with the, with the tracker. So it's, it's like a pay as you download thing that can work. Um, and since web monetization is something we do in the browser, I needed some torrent protocol that works in the browser and that is WebTorrent. And good for me, it's completely open source too. So I could basically go and use the WebTorrent uh, implementation and tweak it to add, um, to add to monetization and receive verification to it. And WebTorrent is like very, very similar to how BitTorrent work. It's basically the same, but instead of using um, TCP and UDP, UDP um, connections between the peers, it uses WebRTC, but the rest is exactly the same. So, um, I had to put this license fee uh, or this, this license somewhere that includes the license fee. And uh, the obvious choice there was the torrent file. So a, a common torrent file um, has, um, well, always has to have two, um, um, how do you call that? Like two uh, parameters. The, the announce, which is basically a URL to the tracker, and then an info object, which includes the length, which is the file size, um, the name of the file, the um, piece length, which is the size of each individual piece, and then um, the number of pieces that a file is made up of. And uh, then what I did is I added the license part to it, which includes a payment pointer, a verifier endpoint, and then an amount, an asset code, and an asset scale. And um, in the torrent world, there also exists um, this uh, notion of a magnet URI, which is a URI that encodes some of the information that is also um, in the torrent file. So usually it's, a, it's an info hash, 
so that's just the hash of the file, then uh, that doesn't have to be there. That's just the name of the file and then um, a list of trackers or just one tracker. And for my purpose, I also had to add the payment pointer there and I had to add the verify endpoint. So I, I made the magnet URI a little bit bigger. And then this is the flow of how it works. Um, everything that is not green is pretty much the same as it is in normal web torrent. And uh, the green part is basically the in-between steps to verify payments. So let me walk through that. So I, I have Alice and Bob, and both of them have a client that is in the browser. Alice is the one that created the content and is seeding it. And Bob is the one that wants the content and is downloading or also called leeching in the torrent world. Um, we have Alice as well, because obviously she wants to be paid. We have a tracker and we have a verifier. So Alice um, opens up her client and specifies the file and uh, the license parameters. So I guess the license part is also part only part of, of my uh, ILP torrent. Um, and then the client will generate the torrent file and the magnet UI and it will announce it uh, to the tracker. So the tracker will register, well, it gets the torrent file and then registers that there is one peer within this form, which is Alice, who is the only one that uh, currently has 100% of the file parts. And Alice's client will also display the magnet URI to her. It's because it's usually use the magnet URI because it's just so much shorter and not a file, so it's way easier to share. So Magnet URI is with Alice and she see, she somehow shares it with Bob, maybe sends him an email and it's like, here's my cool new movie, please check it out. Um, and uh, Bob enters the Magnet URI into his client and the client will automatically decode this URI. And uh, now it uh, retrieves the payment pointer out of there and since this client is like in the browser, uh, the payment pointer is added to the monetization um, meta tag and starts streaming at this point. So um, payments are being streamed to Alice's wallet and uh, streamed via the verifier. So um, the wallet um, will issue stream receipts and um, pass those back to Bob's client. And Bob's client then submits those receipts, including a balance ID to the verifier who credits those. And um, then the Bob's client doesn't really know when to go, so it will retry, but um, it will retry and request the peer list. And if the tracker is able to um, sufficiently spend the balance that is specified in the license, it will respond with a peer list. If not, it will just, um, well, respond with something similar to a 402 payment required. So um, Bob's client will just retry. And as soon as the, the payments um, are there to cover the license fee, um, the peer list is communicated and then Bob's client can go and download Alice's movie. So that's how that works. And uh, obviously that's not, that's not perfect. So um, we have a couple of issues here um, and I talked about it a little bit earlier already. So um, first of all, there's the trust issue. So the creator needs to trust that the tracker actually verifies the receipts and not just uh, communicates the peer list, whatever, um, then there still is a piracy issue there. So even though those peer lists are updated quite frequently, you could see that there is some service that just publishes the peer list and this service is like the only one paying, but publishes just it somewhere else and then some other torrent clients import the peer list and download right away. Um, right now, um, I don't have this uh, pay while you download thing implemented. So what it is doing at the moment is you actually wait until the entire license fee 
is paid and then you get to download the reason for that was that i wasn't i didn't really figure out how to know how much of the file will be downloaded per um per like request to the tracker for a peer list so it could be that it just like within like it will request this peer list um, depending on how you set it up every 10 to 30 seconds and depending on how fast it downloads it finishes or it will request this again and like for everything i tried which was mainly um, images it would just uh, download everything in one go um, so there's like i would have to investigate how to figure out how much it can actually download in one go to do this pay as you download version and I had the issue of currency conversion because uh, stream receipts do not have uh, asset details, but that so the tracker doesn't really know what to um, spend. It gets a balance ID and it knows the it knows the asset details within the license, but those don't have to be the asset details of the amount in the receipt. So. Um, that's also still an issue that needs to be resolved. Um, I think issues one, two, three, I could potentially solve if we could have the peers be uh, the ones verifying payments before sharing the file parts. Um, I guess you would have to trust multiple peers then, but uh, um, well, I always think like there, there could be like a few bad actors in there, but some of them will probably um, act correctly. And especially if you have some incentive mechanism for them. So if we could do some revenue sharing, we're not just the entire um, payment stream is going to the content creator, but some of it also goes to the um, peers, then they are incentivized to um, actually verify the, the payments and then also to stay online because one other problem um, you have in the torrenting world is that um, a lot of downloaders basically just download the file and as soon as they're done, they're gone and they don't um, stay within the network. So there you have those fluctuations of um, who, uh, like how many people are in a swarm and how, who you can download from. Like I experience that with my Ubuntu use case all the time. If I get it when it's fresh, then there's a lot of people in the swarm and it doesn't take long, but now I've waited forever. So probably if I go now and want to get Ubuntu 2004, uh, there's nobody there and it takes longer than just downloading the ISO file directly from Ubuntu.com. So that is that. Um, I could demo too, but maybe let's see if there are some questions first. Yeah, why don't we have a round of questions and then do a demo and then see if there's some more questions. Any, anyone have um, any questions for Sabina before we do a demo? It's quite a lot to take in there. And I've, and I've seen some of this before and it was still hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, do you mind going back one slide there, Sabina? Just to the, the challenges. Um, Probably I mean, not are, all of them. Have you got any? Yeah, have you got any thoughts on um, potential next steps to try and implement that solution? Like what, what, what would be necessary to, to do that? So, well, um, I probably have to talk to, to Brandon again about receipt verification, if we could figure out a way that um, instead of having just one proxy, having multiple proxies, um, but I guess that's not the only issue there um, that, that stops me from having the peers verifying the payments because also like all some peers, there's, there's, there's always like a, an overlap of who has which file parts. You don't really know who you're downloading it from. And then, um, well, maybe you do know where you who you're downloading it from. So it isn't an issue that you I was thinking you could have like double double spends almost by the peers when and spending against the verifier they are running. So 
Yeah. So, so, so at a, I mean, at a high level, if we could um, find a way for streamer receipts to be verifiable by multiple parties, yeah, um, that would solve this. But because right now that would mean like somehow the receipt verifier would have to share the key exactly. with every with everybody. Um, interesting. That's yeah, and that's a difficult thing to to do up front. Uh, okay, so so some way to do the receipt verification. I'm I'm trying to think if there's other use cases where that would also be useful. Like, what? well, maybe. Um, to be able to have lots of people able to verify receipts, but you know, I can't think off the top of my head of other use cases. Hmm. Maybe there's a Codius use case where you have like multiple Codius hosts and. Yeah, so I guess it's like if you're paying into, if you're paying into a single account, but you're getting the service delivered by a distributed set of people who just care that you made the payment, um, or distributed services, then then that's useful, and not needing to coordinate upfront that they will get their receipt verification key. Yeah, uh, that does feel like sort of an, in an abstract way, like a, a quite a useful thing to be able to do. Even even if like the entity that's getting paid, I would imagine like an entity, some let's call it a company selling a service, uh, they're going to have one account where they want to receive their money normally, um, but they likely have a distributed infrastructure, like lots of servers all over the place. It would still be pretty handy if all of those servers could do receipt verification without having to like call home to get a key first. Um, and I guess the bigger challenge with this is that, like you say, peers could be um, all over. Anyway, yeah, I, I guess my, where I was trying to get there was I wonder if there's like a more general solution to that multiple verifiers problem, or if there's something you could get working specifically built in to like Torrance protocol. Like something about tar the torrent protocol you can leverage that would only work for that. Well, I hope there is a like multi-purpose solution. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was that was it from me. Any anyone else have any other questions? Um, Sabina, as always, this is great work. Um, the one thing that like does come to mind is like sort of two questions, and it's a bit of a leading question. Have you thought of niches where this can be used um and i guess it's a follow-up to having the peers um sort of the uploaders or the peers verifying the receipts there could be a, a realm where not necessarily a content creator but like i'm i i want to distribute a file like uh, canonical want to do with like ubuntu and they can incentivize peers to host these things so essentially you they just want to say like okay well we will help pay for the hosting of you uploading this file, um, sort of in the same same vein of like what Filecoin are trying to do, um, but more sort of like intellegi intellegiary with uh, with this type of approach. Have you given some thoughts to that? Yeah, definitely the second one. So I also like I, I see that all the time that uh, um, the the swarm is pro is is like some a lot of the time not very. Uh, populated so definitely incentivizing people to stay online um, without ha paying having to pay for the content creator <laughs> still makes sense to me so um, um, you could just do that but um, that again requires that the, the peers actually can can verify well maybe it doesn't then you just need to verify that they themselves got paid so maybe this is some in-between step that one could do um, and then your other question was? Um, have you identified any niches where we can start trying to market to or get people to use this that it solves their problem? Hmm. So I always thought it's more about- more of a BDE approach. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought about uh, like really those uh, um, maybe like indie movie creators that don't get their movies into movie theaters um, or even just for like monetizing 
pictures or, or something that's not really like where you like all of the content where you don't really have the ability to really monetize it yet except you do ads somehow but i haven't thought of any fancy thing to monetize Brandon's got jokes <laughs> in the chat. Um, for for I open um, the chat while also sharing my screen. <laughs> no, all, all Brandon said is what's a movie theater. Um, <laughs> um, so so something now you as punishment you have to make him help you uh, figure out a, an open FARS uh, a function that you can deploy that is a a cedar. Um, that gets paid by web monetization to stay online and continue seeding files. Um, like it feels like there's a there's a perfect marriage between this and Podia somewhere where like people can just deploy you know almost headless like dumb services that just seed files as long as people are paying to download them. And they just stay up and use the income to pay for their hosting, uh, like autonomous sort of file seeders. Yeah, well, I already have one that is not running on Codius OpenFast, but uh, I think there's some some tiny changes I have to make, and then that would work. That seems really, yeah, that that would be really cool. Um, okay, well, if there's not a lot of, uh, if there's not other questions, why don't we do a demo, and maybe people will think of a few, a few more. Um, if you're ready to do a, a quick demo, and then yeah, we, we can try and take a few questions after. Sure. So um, I have a, a little bit of a, a front end here to this. So um, if you want to go play with it, it's on ILP Torin, well, ILP Torin .com app. And it, it allows you to leach or download a file and also to see the file. Um, let's do the leaching first. And actually, this this file right here, it's a picture um, of a protea that I took at the botanical garden in Cape Town. Um, and this one is being um, seeded by by the service that is always running, and that I could um, move to Codius, I think. So basically, all we have to do right now, this is being seated, we just put it in here and um, submit, and hopefully it works. So web monetization starts, and now uh, we're waiting. Tried it earlier, it took like five seconds, so hopefully it doesn't take too long now. But sometimes it takes longer. Depends on my bandwidth right now. So what's happening now is you are paying by coil to this um, server, and once you've paid enough, it's going to give you the peers list. Exactly, and then it, I, I, it, the file will disappear. So um, the tracker now tries to verify the payment, and as soon as there is enough, it will release the peer list, and I will connect to my server service that is running somewhere and that is seeding the. Um, image and it will download it and show it. I don't know why it's taking so long right now. That's are you, sh are you sure because you've it's a got demo. money in your have you got money in your uh, have you been using your coil account too much and you you've been rate limited uh, maybe <laughs> I tried it earlier today and it worked so yeah. I'm <laughs> I wonder that's why how demo, that's how the demo gods work you see yeah, I know. Maybe I should just refresh and try again. They make sure that uh, something that worked five minutes before the demo stops working. Let's see. Ah, okay. Credit receipt error. Okay, interesting. But just one. So it is crediting some receipts. Okay, let me just. Let's try this again. Please work now. It's not working. 
It worked the last time I demoed it. Um, I'm, I'm trying it. I'm just going to quickly tell you what's going on. Okay, so it's having an issue. Mine's having an issue loading. Ah, mine's there stuff now. The verify. Oh, there we go. Mine came through now. So it obviously, I did get one, three, I've got three, 400 errors um, from the verify with mine. Okay, so. Um, something in the verify, something in the verify. My verify is also that, uh, an old yeah, version. No, exactly. Ah, got the same picture as you. Cool. Yeah. So nice that's photo. right. I, I tried the um, portrait mode of the new iPhone. <laughs> Took a portrait of a flower. Exactly. Okay, and then seating. I didn't try that earlier, so hopefully that works now. Um, so for this, we actually need a proxy payment pointer at a verifier. That's because I'm using um, my old uh, receipt verifier service and Brandon and I are discussing about updating that. So you could actually just use your payment pointer because like the notion of a proxy payment pointer is, uh, uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, more like less intuitive. But basically, what this, this is is a is a payment pointer that is hosted at the verifier, and you send your SPSP request to that, and then it figures out which real uh, payment pointer this request belongs to, and then proxies the SPSP request to the um, wallet. And um, so what, what everybody could do is just have their own stream receipt verifier running as a creator. But um, I also have the service because it's a little bit more user friendly. Uh, I actually don't know if I probably never tried this one. So I have to, hmm. Well, this is the um, stream receipt verifier service. So what I can do here is I can create this proxy payment pointer using my normal payment pointer. Um, I can test whether it's working and I can delete it. Uh, so if I don't want this verifier service to proxy anymore, it'll forget about it. So now I wish I remembered my payment pointer, but ever since I switched to uphold, I don't remember it because it has this random string at the end. Um, so I just you need to create a vanity payment pointer that redirects really to that one. What do you mean? So you need to create a payment point at sabinebertram.com. And when requests go to that, they just auto redirect to your uphold one. I've never thought of that. That's a, such a good idea. <laughs> There's actually quite a cool article about it. I'll try to dig it up. Uh, somebody in the community wrote a blog post about it. Um, okay, yeah, thank you. That'd be great. Um, well, I can, I, can slack, I can slack you a payment pointer if you want. Yes, please select me a payment pointer and I'll use that I'm gonna one. Try, I'm going to try something random and try a coil payment pointer. So let's see if this works because this will be uh, testing the boundaries a little bit. Matt, you are, you, 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 this is, this is like really tempting the demo gods here. Uh, <laughs> it's going to work. This, this, what's the point if you can't YOLO things? Let's try this. I'm, I'm very curious if this works. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Oopsie. It's this one, right? Yep. So this will work because it just always, what it does is just hashes the entire thing and puts it at the end. 
Oh, I can close it. I don't remember. Such a long time ago that I did it. But let's test it. Oh, nah, not working. Very oh, yeah. I'll send. I'm trying to think why that wouldn't. Um, but I'll send you an uphold one anyway. I've got my uphold payment pointer here. Um, I wonder why that would. I would be curious why that didn't work. Me too. We can debug later. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, but I'm only giving this payment point if you send me a hundred dollars. Hey. <laughs> well, gonna send you. Yeah, I've sent it. Don't leak all our chats about uh, other people there. <laughs> I tried to be super quick. <laughs> it's recorded. It doesn't matter how quick you are. That is true. Don't have to put it somewhere. Do you think it had anything to do with not having the um, not having the dollar sign because it was HTTPS, or do you handle both cases? Is that not working now? I do handle both cases. Uh, okay. This works. So thank you for this one. As a, as a quick refresher, do you want to explain to people what, um, what you just did there? So you, you took a, a normal payment pointer and you created a proxy for it at the yes. verifier service. Exactly. And then I'm, I'm trying it out by basically when, whenever I submit it here, it will put it into the monetization meta tag and it will wait for the first five receipts to come in and then it will stop. Cool. So, so um, by using this proxy payment pointer now, people, any like client that connects to that and tries to make an SPSP request um, will get back a get back metadata to be able to verify receipts, right? Right. Yeah, and, but in the background, what you're doing is you're making a request to the original payment pointer to get the actual ILP address and secret. Yes. Cool. And to tell the wallet, please also give me receipts in the packet. Okay, so that works now. So. I think I know why it doesn't work. It's I don't think I'm handling the header correctly for the receipt verifier properly. So that goes here, that's my proxy payment pointer. And then this thing also tells me what the endpoint is. Um, so that's where I need to, or, well, the, whenever downloading the receipts have to be credited using this endpoint. And then I will make, I'll make it cheap because then it will, won't take that long, hopefully, but sorry, Matt, you won't get that much. And uh, oh, do I have a movie, some screencast. I don't know what that is, but let's use that. Um, you can change the name too, but I'll just leave it. And I'll get my magnet URI. And then let's just hope I can. So the um, the seeder for that is now your bro is is it's being seeded via WebTorrent from your browser yes. right now. Cool. Yes. Thanks for asking. That's it's mm -hmm. being so this browser is now um, seeding it, and I open an incognito browser. Um, but if you and if you if you kill that browser tab, it would no longer be. Seated, yes. Right. right. Okay. So, oops. Oh no, I don't have coil in incognito. I should have tried that earlier. I'm sorry about that. 
Um, you get to the It's probably just because you're not logged in. No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't having it. I wasn't using it in England cognito. Now I'm using it. Uh, OK. And I'll paste this one now. And here's my movie. Oh, it's actually the movie about this. <laughs> <laughs> It's a recorded demo. That's amazing. Well, yeah, we can watch it now. There we go. Should just demo demos work perfectly every time if you pre-record them. Exactly. I should just use that. Wouldn't have been as much fun, and Matt would have made no money out of the whole thing. But yeah, that's it. I'm glad it still works. This part. That's very that that's very cool um thanks so much and and yeah i mean as matt said like awesome job um i think the the ui on front on on top of it is is really great because it it makes it a lot more accessible for people to try out um so what are your what are your plans for this what's what do you want to do with this next so i definitely want to move to um to verification by the peers and then also i really want the the ref share or just paying peers um for staying online um that's that would be my main focus yeah i mean the the incentive for the peers is is a big one yes you can see i think it's the would, biggest that, that that's probably the most important because I, I i guess one of the challenges um i remember this came up before in this problem space was like one of the challenges with paying for content this way is the licensing and the like you know the embedding license and the ease at which someone could like take an embedded license just replace it and say well rather pay me um and so i guess it's it's like it's well suited for certain use cases as matt said like this there, it'd be interesting to explore exactly which use cases this model works well for and then what we could build on top of this to make it easier to do like properly sort of rights protected content distribution um and pay and payment in this way that's it's a really hard problem it is any thoughts on it <laughs> any any ideas Are you asking me? Yeah, or anyone else. Like, I, I, I mean, if, if we've got this really efficient way of sharing um, content and paying for it using ILP in a sort of distributed way, the challenge then is how do you make sure you're always paying the right people for that content? And how do you make sure people do pay for it before they get it? I guess those are the two things you have to solve for. Because right now you could just say, okay, well, we're sharing content. This is less about paying the content creators and more about paying seeders, incentivizing seeders. Um, but if you really want like this to be payment for the content itself, um, then then we'd have to solve those problems. It feels like. Yeah, I think the the problem of not really knowing who really originated the content is something that I don't. I don't even think this will solve because I mean, obviously anybody can take something off the internet and create a license for it and put it here. Um, so you could probably include some schema that checks whether this file has already been uploaded with an or, or seeded with another license. But I mean, then it is like who comes first is the is that the one that actually created it, it or is is that one just the one that was fastest pirating it so um i think this is not an easy to solve problem yeah and i have no like idea how to solve it. it it occurs to me though that like this is just um a really good technical distribution mechanism yeah but the actual like the legal side of distribution 
is different. And maybe I wonder if there's like a world in which the people who actually do own the digital rights to a lot of content and do distribute it could still adopt this technology and they could have some way that you, as a client, you check with them before you start paying for content. Like you go and say, okay, well, I want to download this, you know, latest movie. Um, and, and I know I actually want to do it legally and not pirate it. And so I can use, you know, BitTorrent, but, but pay and make sure, and I have a way of verifying that, like the file I'm, I'm downloading is actually um, from the right people and I'm paying the right people. I don't know. Yeah. Like the, 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 the right owners host a server that gives you, you know, um, gives you the magnet link and yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like the, there may be a combination of decentralized and centralized sort of services. Yeah. Yeah. To, well, to that, that, implies so, that. that implies that people actually want to download content legally. So. I think, I think that is the case. I think people download stuff illegally often just because they don't have better options. I mean, I think the number of people who pay, for example, for music subscriptions from whatever Spotify, Apple Music, and so on, suggests like, you know, people would rather do that than try and, you know, collect illegal MP3 rips like they used to 10 years ago. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess we'll have to see. I, I, I just feel like if, if, people who own the content made it really easy to access and priced it reasonably, people would pay for it. But uh, I, I certainly hope so. I, I'd be <laughs> one of those people, but uh, I come, I came across uh, some, some people that were still like pirate baying everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like an interesting case is for us in South Africa, um, any content that's now on Disney plus, we just can't access, you, you can't pay for it. And so, you know, there's a lot of like, if you read the local tech media, you'll hear that a lot of people are basically saying, yeah, well, you know, I would, if I could get it through one of the subscription services that we have, I would, but I can't. So I pirate it. <laughs> so yeah, it's the same with like, HBO over here in Germany, you can't yeah. get HBO content. So I wonder if this is a solution like this is making, making, making access to the content and paying for it really, really simple means people would actually do it. Be, be interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to think about this more. <laughs> any, any other questions for Sabina? We've got a few minutes before the top of the hour. Um, while you all think of that, Sabina, um, where can people have a look at the code if, uh, if it's available and, and I mean, the, you've given the URL to play with your instance, but if people want to deploy this themselves and experiment, uh, what's the best thing to do? Um, so I, it's on GitHub and I published two blog posts about this and both of them have the link to the code. Um, I could probably also put it in the Okay, great. I think in your, your, don't worry, your links to the blog posts are in the forum. Yes, on today's and agenda. they have so, links so to anyone, the post. Yeah, anyone who's looking for them will find them there. Okay, great. Um, any, any other comments or thoughts before we wrap up? I don't think we have time really to pick up anything else today. Okay. In that case, um, our next call will be on the 11th of November. Um, thanks again, Sabina, for, for, um, for the presentation. Um, so we've had two, two calls running uh, with some good uh, demos and presentations and discussion of projects people are working on. Um, I may get on Brandon's case again for another one soon. I almost made him present again today, um, but he's been doing some really cool stuff with open fast. So um, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll go digging a bit and see, see where we can get together for the 11th of November. If anyone uh, would like to volunteer something they're working on, want to demo and talk it through um, a topic I would really like to explore sometime soon is um, payment point of validation or verification. So, 
some some clever way that when I get a payment point, I can know something about the entity that is purporting to own it, um, whether it's a company or an individual, who they are, and and verify that somehow so that I can do things like get invoices, open payments invoices that have maybe a signature on them. Um, and this keeps coming up in various like pieces of work that we're doing at COIL um, and, and experiments we're doing that, that this is something we would want to solve. So if anyone has clever ideas on that, I'd love to pick that topic up again soon, um, whether it's on the next call or, or calls to come or on the forum as well. Any last comments or questions before we call it a day? All right, in that case, Ember, thanks again, Sabina, that was awesome. Um, I'll work with you on, we'll put the, you know, put the audio up as we normally do and uh, find a good solution for a video of the demo. Um, and we'll share that on the forum, um, follow up to today's agenda thread. And with that, we'll call it a day and see you all again on the 11th of November. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye.